Okay, hello and welcome. This is Dan Swiskers from vemonline.net. Um, in today's session, we'll talk about the upper chest region. Um, in our previous sessions, we looked at the uh, shoulder, shoulder complex, uh, upper back, and we are slowly moving, uh, slowly moving uh, from upper body uh, towards other regions. So actually, uh, in, during during our next lectures, we'll go, we'll be going lower and lower and lower region by region. Today we are talking about anterior chest. Uh, so once again, let's uh, let's review. Um, um, basic terms. So let's start with basic terminology, uh, which is very important. Uh, again, uh, uh, as 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 we we talked about uh, directions, uh, we we dis discussed that many 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 times uh, during our previous uh, sessions. Uh, this is the basis, uh, the basic basics. Uh, uh, so let's review this one more time: anterior posterior, anterior mo uh, uh, meaning uh, closer towards front of the body, posterior closer towards back of the body right so as, as we could kind of like uh, zoom in and zoom out uh, through through layer layers uh, as we go closer towards the chest that's anterior side uh, as we go closer towards the spine towards the back that's posterior side medial lateral medial moving closer towards the midline uh, lateral me moving away from midline right uh, if we are talking about limbs upper limbs lower limbs so we can use uh, post uh, we can use sorry we can use distal and proximal distal moving away proximal moving closer towards toward the body um, and then uh, another one would be uh, superficial and deep so deeper structures are layer by layer by layer closer towards the core and superficial structures more superficial structures are layer layer up layer up layer up, layer up so for for example let's say skin is the most superficial organ as we go deeper then deeper will have fascia then uh, for example uh, let's uh, let's take chest for example skin then deep 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 to skin fascia deep to fascia uh, pectoralis major, deep, deep to pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, deep to pectoralis minor ribs, and so on and so forth. Right. So deeper structures and more superficial structures. Another one, um, uh, moving uh, up towards the ceiling and uh, moving down closer towards the ground, going up um, uh, superior direction, go going towards the ground, inferior direction. So these uh, these basic terms we just have to know. Uh, so today we'll talk about three muscles. Uh, we will start with the, uh, um, I think we'll start with pectoralis major, then we'll take a look at pectoralis minor, and then we'll take a look at sternocleidomastoid, so these three muscles. Uh, at first, let's, uh, let's take a look at bony landmarks. Uh, let's take a look at uh, bony attachments. Uh, so at first, we will look at the uh, bony anatomy, and then we will add the actual mu muscle belly, and uh, we'll talk about uh, origin insertion and action primarily. So these three things, that's that's really, that. this is the purpose of the, these sessions uh, for you guys to, um, uh, to uh, memorize basically uh, uh, origin, insertion and action of any any muscle in, in the body. So we'll start with uh, more important structures and then we'll go towards the other ones which are not that important these are these ones are quite visible quite uh, quite superficial pectorals uh, pectorals major is the most superficial muscle in, in in chest region and that's very significant so in this region that's the most important so to say muscle um, pectoralis minor lying right underneath and uh, sternocleidomastoid uh, biggest muscle in the anterior neck region it's uh, it's quite big uh, so actually you can palpate that uh, when you turn your head um, kind of like sideways like this uh, diagonally basically think about moving your your right side let's say right side here towards left side shoulder like this and it pops out right there right right there so that's sternocleidomastoid these three muscles we'll talk about today uh, let's start with the anatomy okay so let's switch to let's switch to uh, uh, um, screen share and I'll I'll show you I'll show you basic anatomy okay so let's start with the attachment points so here you can see the uh, skeleton 
um, right sides uh, right sides scapula humerus uh, and clavicle are highlighted and as well what do we have here so let's zoom in what do we have here this is one of the uh, uh, bones that make up the skull and this is temporal bone right there this one uh, let's actually zoom in a, a bit more so let's start with temporal bone one of the uh, muscles will have attachment to uh, uh, to temporal bone and a mastoid process in particular so see this uh, this invention here actually so, sorry not inventions actually the more like a hill uh, let's let's use this here right there okay here we go okay right there so I'm talking about this structure here right there so this is mastoid process So and once again, um, all these um, protuberances or indentions or uh, hills or or rough ridges, uh, any any type of structure on the bone usually uh, serves um, uh, not usually always serves a certain function, and uh, mostly like all these uh, all these hill hill like structures that uh, grow outwards will serve. Uh, serve as um, muscle attachments muscular attachments and this is a uh, this is a very important one so once again actually you can palpate that let's go back to video you can palpate that right underneath uh, um, when you go from your earlobes right there so the uh, go just just behind on one side and on the other side so there's this there's that bony bony uh, Kind of a bony outgrowth. Okay, so you can uh, you can palpate that. Okay, so I think uh, somebody else joined. Who is that? That's Cuspers. So oh, hey, Cuspers. <laughs> so uh, once once uh, let let me stop here for a second. Uh, so Cuspers is uh, and this is his first time uh, attending uh, the session. When you when you have something to say, you can uh, turn your mic on and just say. Okay, so uh, if you have any kind of question, you have to. Stop me right there and then, because this is how it goes. Uh, this is not just my monologue. Uh, this is more sort of a discussion. Uh, so I will give uh, I'll give it time um, for for actual discussion to happen. Usually, it's it's gonna be me talking uh, uh, mostly, anyways. But uh, but we'll have a. Uh, um, brief gaps where we'll just you know just just how how quickly I'll talk about it you know like let's say for example what did you understand what didn't, didn't you understand then I can go over some of these concepts or or um, structures or whatever one more time repeat that once again but if you have something to say just uh, turn the mic on and just say it okay that's that's quite important so where we stopped what what do we stop uh, so uh, mastoid process right underneath uh, kind of right behind the ear uh, and once again I strongly recommend that you palpate these structures as we talk about them I name a structure try to palpate it and that's how you will remember it way easier you have to connect your brain with that actual uh, spot and it's it's way easier that way so mastoid process let's go back to screen share Okay, so that's uh, that's temporal bone. Um, let's go and zoom out a bit. So that's the only uh, landmark uh, that we need to know from the uh, from the head region. Uh, that's going to be enough for today. Let's go back to uh, shoulder shoulder girdle. Let's start with humerus humeral bone. So everyone knows, uh, I mean, at least I hope that everybody knows uh, humerus, humeral bone, this one right there. Um, and there is this uh, sort of like a valley um, right uh, right below biceps, uh, biceps brachii, which is actually here, you can actually see what, uh, um, 
what that valley does, like the function of that valley. You can see that one of the uh, bicipital tendons actually occupies that valley. So this is actually a long head of uh, biceps. And let's, uh, let's go right underneath. You can see that there is sort of like this valley, this ridge right underneath uh, the, uh, one of the uh, tendons, one of the uh, um, biceps tendons. So in this valley, we'll have two ridges on one side on, and on the other side. And as we talked about the directions, uh, there is a medial direction and there is lateral direction. Let's go back to, let's go back to my uh, whiteboard here. Okay. So here, I'm talking about uh, this valley here, okay, which is occupied by bicipital tendon. So bicipital tendon is going to run right through, right through this valley. And this valley has uh, these two sides, these two ridges, one on the left side, or let's say to be more anatomically uh, correct, uh, one on the lateral side, lateral, and one on the medial side. Medial. So this uh, this valley has a name. Uh, this valley is called bicipital groove. And as the name states, uh, it refers uh, to biceps, uh, biceps brachii, right? So bicipital groove. It just basically says what uh, what's happening there. Uh, it's going to be occupied by uh, one of the uh, biceps tendons, biceps brachii uh, muscle tendons. Uh, and then this uh, bicipital groove will have two lips, uh, just like your mouth has lips, right? So it will have lateral lip and medial lip, okay? And uh, once again, so as I as I said just a moment ago, any type of a outgrowth, any type of a, a ridge or a, or a hill or anything at all on the bone, any landmark will usually serve a certain function, and these ridges serve serve function for the muscles for for, for muscle attachments, right? So lateral lateral lip of the bicipital groove will serve uh, attachment point for uh, um, for uh, pectoralis major, right? So we'll talk about that in a moment, pectoralis major. And medial, medial, that's uh, medial uh, bicipital groove will, uh, will serve as an, as an attachment to um, teres, uh, teres major from the uh, uh, that's one of the uh, sits muscles. Uh, uh, we talked about that um, in one of our previous uh, sessions. And then actually, the bottom of that bicipital groove is going to be uh, um, is going to serve uh, attachment uh, for the uh, latissimus dorsi. Actually, let's take a look at all these muscles, so you can uh, nicely see that in this model here. Let's zoom out a bit. And let's add all these structures. So um, on this side, uh, right sides, uh, right sides, biceps, uh, right sides, uh, latissimus dorsi, right there. So see, so you can see that uh, it occupies right, uh, right, like the bottom, the bottom portion of that bicipital ridge, bicipital groove. See how the fibers uh, go right underneath, right underneath. Uh, then the, uh, let's see, teres major, right there. See, it actually wraps around from behind, right there. Up. So that's medial, medial lip of bicipital group. And right on top, right on top, we have uh, uh, the um, pectoralis major. Let's see, where do we have that? Right sides, um, right there. 
right side pectoralis major. And here we can see that. Uh, oh, and actually, let's let's add uh, biceps as well. Biceps brachii. And here you can see that uh, that whole uh, whole everything uh, all together. Uh, that's what I was talking about. So so you can see how that bicipital bicipital tendon is basically wrapped around uh, with all these muscles. So uh, pectoral smile from top, and uh, these other uh, these other two muscles from behind. So uh, latissimus dorsi will uh, occupy the uh, the bottom of that uh, bicipital group. And um, Teres Mayor is going to occupy medial lip of that bicipital group. Here you can see the tendons right there. Uh, that's uh, the higher one is uh, Teres uh, Mayor. Uh, the lower one right there is uh, part of latissimus dorsi. And that's the attachment of latissimus dorsi. And here we can see the uh, pectoralis mayor. And we'll talk about pectoralis mayor in a bit. Um, let's go back to the screen share. Nope, very good. We don't need that anymore. That's good. Um, so what else uh, we need? Um, we need to know. We need to know a couple of more structures. Um, uh, let's take a look at the uh, clavicle and uh, and sternum. So here, here we can already see that pectoralis major does attach the uh, uh, sternum from the front from from the front and from the side uh, sternum has three parts sternum has the, the highest part of, of sternum is called uh, manubrium the middle part is called body and the lower part is called xiphoid process so we talked about that uh, in you know previous session and you can as well see that it will attach the clavicle as well and not the whole clavicle only medial portion, uh, medial half of the clavicle. Um, let's layer down. Let's remove pectoral, pectoral muscle. Uh, let's take a look at the underlying structures. And there we have pectoralis minor. And uh, here we can see that uh, biceps. So biceps, as the name states, biceps has two heads. Uh, it has long head and it has short head. Um, long head, as we already uh, talked about it, uh, will occupy that the bicipital groove, and then it, it actually it will kind of come right on top of the uh, glenohumeral joint, and it will actually insert at the top of glenohumeral joint, actually at the uh, at the um, tubercle on the glenoid fossa. Here you can actually see that. Let's zoom in a bit. Here you can see how that tendon kind of like wraps around the uh, joint from top and it will actually insert on the scapula, right? So that's, uh, that's the uh, fossa, that's the, uh, uh, the attachment uh, for the humeral head. Uh, to, uh, to actually, so, so we, we can actually have all these uh, three-dimensional movements of the shoulder, right? So that's the, uh, that's the cup. Um, of a uh, cup uh, part of the joint of, of the uh, glenohumeral joint and uh, long head of the biceps uh, does attach right at the top of that uh, um, glenoid fossa and we can see that here very very good um, the other head the other head attaches to this this outgrowth from the scapula let's remove these muscles and we'll, we'll see that clearly right there so see it, it looks kind of like a hook um, let's this is this is kind of like a top um, top view let's zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm showing here uh, so here you can see clavicle humerus and scapula I'm talking about this this hook like structure right there right there this structure here and this is another structure that you have to know for to, for today to be able to understand what's going on with the muscles. This is called coracoid process. 
coracoid process. Coracoid process is part of the scapula, as we can see. It kind of it kind of goes right right underneath the uh, uh, clavicle, right underneath the lateral lateral part of the clavicle. Uh, so if if we divide clavicle in two uh, parts, uh, so this would be right in the middle, lateral half, medial half. So that's lateral direction. That's medial direction. Right underneath the lateral end of the clavicle, uh, um, and right uh, sort of like superior, superior medial from uh, uh, humeral head, uh, we'll find a uh, coracoid process. You can palpate that. It's not uh, not easy, especially for beginners, uh, um, to to feel it. But um, but more experienced therapists uh, th therapists will 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 find it where, with ease, right? So you 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 can you can palpate it. Uh, so that's about it, I think. Yeah. So bicipital grew coracoid process, uh, then the uh, mastoid process on. Uh, uh, on the uh, on a skull uh, sternum uh, and that's about it that's about these are all the structures that we need and of course ribs uh, pectoral mineral is gonna um, originate from the ribs let's zoom into this one one more time so let's take a look at these three muscles that uh, that we are going to talk about today just like a quick overview guys so pectoral smire that's one of them platysma we don't need sternocleidomastoid and right underneath uh, pectoral smire we, we have pectoralis minor here you can see only only the attachment, right? So only just just this tiny portion, just just this tiny end. That's part of the uh, pectoralis minor. These three muscles are are our topic for today. Really, let's start with the uh, let's start with pectoralis major. So everybody has heard about this muscle, I hope at least. Uh, and uh, here we can clearly see that it has at least two heads. So depending on the literature, depending on the uh, um, on, the, on the author, uh, they will talk about either two heads or three heads. Uh, um, so some will say that uh, pectoralis major has a, a clavicular head and a, a sternocostal head. Some um, some will say that it has a clavicular head, sternal head, and coastal head. Let me let me show you what what exactly do I mean by that. So this muscle can be divided in, uh, like me personally, I divide it in three portions, right? So like, let's say, for example, top portion right there, clavicular head, because it originates from clavicle right there. And then sternal part, which originates from the sternum. And the uh, coastal part. Let me color it in a different color. Let's go with purple, for example. And coastal part. And you can see that uh, they have uh, different fiber directions. So it doesn't really matter uh, if if you are uh, if you believe in the in the fact that it has two heads or three heads. It doesn't really matter, really. Um, but what we really need to understand is that uh, in this muscle has uh, three different fiber directions. So the top fibers, uh, uh, clavicular fibers, uh, have this uh, 45 degree angle almost uh, going downwards, right? Uh, sternal head parallel to the ground, right? So fibers go parallel to the ground. And the inferior part, bottom part, uh, sort of five, uh, 45 degree angle going upwards okay and this will produce different motions and that's that's this is very very important that's the key uh, key concept here right 
Um, that's the key thing to understand here. So that all these fiber directions will uh, will actually produce different movements. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, the uh, the actual anatomy of, of the muscle first, like uh, before we start with the origin insertion and the action. Um, here you can see that uh, clavicular head is right on top. So these are the most superficial fibers. So once again, what does superficial, what does deep mean? Superficial means uh, closer towards the surface, right? So this portion here uh, originating from clavicle is the most superficial part of the muscle. Then the next one, so we, as, as, as if we would go layer by layer down towards, towards closer towards the core. Uh, the sternal head is the, right underneath the clavicular head and then the coastal head is right underneath the, uh, right underneath the uh, um, sternal head. Uh, let me make sure that I said it right. I mean, I really want to understand, uh, I really want you to, guys to understand this. So as we go from the top, okay, so three heads, clavicular head, sternal head, and, and coastal head, right? So layer by layer, clavicular head is the most superficial layer. Then one layer down, that's the uh, sternal head. And then the most, the deepest one is the uh, uh, coastal head, right? Uh, the, uh, the head that originates from the, uh, from the ribs, actually, from actually from the cartilages, uh, coastal cartilages. And the fiber direction, once again, so the most superficial part, clavicular head, has this downward, downward direction, so kind of like 45 degree angle pointing towards the ground. Then one layer down, we have sternal head. That's gonna be parallel to the ground. And then the most, 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 the deepest head is uh, pointing upwards, right? And you see that actually the muscle makes this twist, okay? Uh, there are a couple of these muscles. We talked about one of them uh, last time. Uh, we we uh, took a look at the, uh, uh, what was that? There was levator scapula that twists, that makes a twist uh, as it comes from the uh, top of the uh, scapula and inserts into the transverse processes on the, on the neck. Uh, as it, as it uh, comes from origin to insertion, it makes this 180 degree turn. Same happens with the pectoral. Um, you, you, will see, uh, you will see that in the image. It actually makes a twist, 180 degree twist. And there's, there's another muscle that does that. Uh, that's uh, the... Uh, uh, swimmer's muscle, right? So latissimus dorsi makes a twist as well. Uh, so one thing that uh, that's very key uh, is that um, all these muscles that that have this twist in the fiber direction uh, will be particularly prone for trigger points. Uh, these muscles are all all muscles that will develop trigger points are mostly um, outer unit muscles. And this we talked about, like I think, like right at the beginning. So there's uh, there's outer units, I'd say, and then there's inner unit. Inner unit, uh, that's the core. Those are core muscles. Uh, they work constantly. They work 24/7, right? So so uh, those are the muscles that will keep you in erect position, right? So so you're able to sit or walk or whatever. So they are always under constant stress, constant work. They cannot produce a lot of movement, but they they produce a little movement, but they they are always in like they work all the time. These other muscles will produce a lot of power. Like they, and especially if we talk about pectorals, right? So that's the biggest muscle of the chest. It's very powerful, right? So we, you know, like all the weight, weight lifters, so, you know, bench press and all that type of stuff, right? So it's it's a key muscle for that. That's that's the muscle that will primarily internally rotate our our shoulders and, in, and it will adduct, horizontally adduct the uh, humerus, right? So basically we're talking about the, this motion, right? So can I internally rotate and add, and bring it towards towards the midline? That's pectorals, right? So they produce a lot of power, but they are prone to fatigue. And if you overwork them, they will develop trigger points. Same happens with the uh, levator scapula, and that's again those are those are the people that will tend to breathe apically, 
constantly under stress people that will tend to elevate shoulders bring them towards the towards the front so postural postural cause uh, so that muscle just gets overworked and again develops trigger points uh, what the trigger point really is so we talked about that last time but uh, uh, Kaspers was not there and Elin was not there so what the trigger point really is it's basically it's a it's a, if if muscle has been working over time let's say under constant stress uh, and this again these th we're talking about outer unit muscles this not, this is not going to happen to inner unit muscles inner unit muscles are not going to produce trigger points okay so outer unit muscles uh, if if they compensate for some kind of a uh, I mean, uh, maybe there's some kind of injury, or you just go to the gym. I mean, like just overwork those pectorals, just just too much. Right? Like, let's say you have you haven't been working out for like one year, two years, or half a year, or whatever, and you want to go right back at it and let's make a crazy workout, and and then you're sore, right? You know, like the next day, maybe some kind of like a referred pain, you know, down the arm, up the neck, whatever. It could be just a trigger point, right? You develop the trigger point. Um, so uh, t what the trigger point really is, it's a fiber bundle, muscle fiber bundle that is particularly overworked is going to develop an exquisite nodule either right in the middle or at the, at the attachments, so closer to one or the other attachment. And if you press on it, it create, recreates that uh, very characteristic uh, trigger point pain referral, we call it. And every muscle uh, it has a very specific... Uh, uh, specific direction, specific pain referral pattern. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, so really, we, right now we're talking about uh, pectorals. I just wanted to, I just wanted to just give a quick overview b before we go into into actual anatomy, uh, origin, insertion, and action. I just really wanted to, you to visualize that it has three heads or two heads okay like let's say at least clavicular head and sternocostal head so some some mm, experts some anatomy uh, gurus will say that it has two heads some will say that it has three heads i say it's, it has three heads okay it doesn't really matter but there are there is this fiber direction and there, this fiber bundle is going to produce different motion this fiber bundle is going to produce different motion and this fiber bundle is going to produce different motion, right? So that's that's really that's the key concept here, and uh, and it uh, does produce that uh, for uh, that uh, the twist, uh, 180 degree twist. That's really what I wanted you to understand that there is clavicular head, the most superficial sternal head, one layer deeper, and uh, and um, uh, coastal head um, coastal cartilage head that's the deepest one right and as they all insert into cumulus they make this 40 uh, not 45 180 degree twist and let's take a look at that let's go back to uh, screen screen share here you can clearly see that see how it makes this turn so it's like it's there's like a twist there let's zoom in a bit Right here, you can clearly see that twist. See how how cl uh, clavicular head is right on top, then the middle layer. Right there, right underneath clavicular head, that's the uh, uh, sternal head, and right like the deepest one is actually coming from the uh, coastal cartilages. Okay, and here we can actually uh, like actually let's 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 remove pectoral. This is pectoral minor, right? So. But here, let's see. This this is uh, we view from the back, right? So we are sort of zooming, zooming in, right, right there. Again, you can see that twist, that forty-five, uh, no, sorry, uh, hundred eighty degree twist. Mo most superficial fibers, uh, clavicular fibers, one layer deeper, sternal fibers, and deepest layer is the uh, uh, is the most inferior fiber bundle. That's the uh, coastal fibers. And that's that's pectoral. So let's take a look at the anatomy. Let's take a look at the region insertion and the action. Uh, well, nerve supply as well. I mean, I strongly encourage you to memorize that if you can. If you can't, you know, so be it. Doesn't really matter. Um, the most important part is uh, is the uh, origin insertion and action. And here we have it right there. So this is again. This is uh, this comes from uh, Nikita Vizhnyak's uh, Red Muscle Manual. Nikita Vizhnyak is a colleague of mine. Uh, 
Um, so I have uh, I have full rights using his materials. Uh, um, so this this is this is more for Caspers. Uh, he uh, this is his first session. Uh, uh, when you do this, when you look at the uh, when you, when you uh, when you're learning um, uh, about anatomy, uh, when you're trying to memorize stuff, I strongly recommend you guys to use colors. Uh, every uh, every uh, anatomy book will uh, will I mean not all of them, but most of them will uh, will use red for origin. So and this is I strongly recommend you to use red. So that's where the muscle starts. That's where it originates from. Origin is red. Uh, insertion is blue, usually. Blue or gray. Mostly it's going to be blue. Insertion. And action, well, I mean, I, that's, that's my approach. I, I go with green. I, I usually use green for action. Okay. And then usually for everything else, I use purple. So purple. So that will be uh, nurse supply, blood supply, synergies, and all like uh, all other clinical notes and stuff like that. So that's going to be purple. But these two uh, uh, origin and search and uh, uh, red and blue for sure, right? So don't um, don't confuse that. Uh, everywhere where you see, where you will see uh, red on any kind of anatomical charts that's that refers to origin that's where it starts and that's the region right there so red let's color it red so depending on the on the source and depending on the um, uh, literature source uh, depending on the author again they will say it has either you know two heads or <laughs> one head or whatever or three heads uh, but the thing is that at least, you know, you have to say that there, it has upper fibers, middle fibers, and lower fibers. That's the key, really. So upper fibers originate from, that's where, that's where they come from. Um, medial, medial, right? So once again, medial closer towards the midline. That's the midline. Uh, lateral going away. So medial one half, right there, that's the medial half of the clavicle. Clavicle, that clav uh, clavicle, right there. Clavicular bone. Collar bone, or in Latvian we say atlagus calls. Uh, so, so that's uh, the we, we're looking at the medial half, right there. This this portion here. Middle fibers, anterior sternum. We can be a little bit more um, precise, a little bit more correct. Uh, uh, we could say uh, anterior lateral sternum because uh, they don't really originate from from the top surface. They, they originate kind of from the side. They can anterior laterally. We can say anterior lateral. Anterior lateral sternum. Uh, so once again, sternum has three parts. Let's zoom in a bit. Uh, let's review this one more time. So this is more again. This is more for cuspers, and this is more for for people that uh, that, that are just joining our sessions here, um, the first time. So that's sternum. Sternum has top part, which is called manubrium. Sternum has middle part, which is called body. And sternum has lower part, which is called xiphoid process. Okay, so and that's the sternum. Um, okay, and the uh, lower fibers uh, originate from costal cartilages, ribs one through six. So the highest, basically highest six ribs. Uh, so ribs, uh, we count them from the top. So first, second, third, and so on and so forth. And we have twelve total. I have a video. Uh, about ribs, uh, where I talk about true ribs, false ribs, and all that. That's one of the first videos, so you can take a look at that. We're not going to review ribs today, but uh, just uh, just know so uh, just just understand that uh, pectoral pectoralis major lower fibers originate from coastal cartilages. Coastal cartilage is uh, is this structure is this cartilaginous structure that connects the rib with the sternum. So it's right in between the rib and the sternum. Here, here you can see that right there. 
that's actually actually let's switch the three-dimensional body you'll see that right away right there so th those are those uh those are those blue kind of bluish colored um uh structures so those are coastal cartilages right and uh, and uh, sternal sternal head so once again sternal head is uh one layer up sternal head uh, originates from the sternum anterior lateral sternum and then we go one layer deeper and uh, that's the those are the deepest fibers which are gonna go kind of uh, kind of uh, 45 angle uh, 45 degree angle up going upwards uh, and they originate from first second third fourth fifth sixth coastal cartilages and actually uh, Actually, it does. Uh, it does connect uh, um, uh, pectorals. Uh, pectorals major actually has a connection with the abdominal fascia, abdominal aponeurosis, and the uh, and actually, um, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, rectus abdominis as well. So it has actually fascial connection to uh, rectus, rectus abdominis is the six pack muscle, right? So that's it. It, it kind of goes right uh, transversely, right? Kind of uh, horizontal, not horizontal. The um, um up and down right so in up and down direction vertical vertical direction sorry let's go back uh so that's the origin that's where it originates from it inserts into lateral lip lateral lip of bicipital groove that we already talked about that so bicipital groove is that uh that groove that uh serves uh as a passage um, for uh, biceps tendon, right? So the um, biceps long head passes right through bicipital groove. And uh, let's actually zoom in. Let's take a look at this image. And you can see that it does attach to lateral lip. So the uh, the lip that's uh, that's outside. That's uh, that's um, so that, that's that's this part here. That's the outer portion. So a bicipital groove would be kind of like, you would go kind of like that. Uh, so bottom part, one more time, bottom part, that's latissimus dorsi. Medial lip, that's another muscle called teres, min, uh, teres major, sorry. Uh, then um, the uh, bicipital groove itself is going to be occupied by uh, biceps tendon. And uh, right on top, right on top, we have pectorals, right? Pectoralis major right on top so that's the most superficial structure that's the structure that's the most on top pectorals is the layer that that's the most superficial layer and all these other structures are one layer down one layer down one layer down okay so that's those are origins or origin and insertion for pectorals major action so uh, Nikita Vizhnik, he kind of simplifies this. Uh, he just uh, he just names uh, just the uh, most important ones. So that's adduction, medial rotation of the shoulder, horizontal adduction of the shoulder, flexion of the shoulder. Uh, there is actually more to it. Okay, there is. It's not that uh, um, we can get we can go a little bit more in depth. Okay, and let's let's actually take a look at that. Let's go back to. Let's go back to video. Opa. Okay, you can turn your mics on. Let's have a quick chat. Okay, so this was, this is the first muscle. So we we looked at the anatomy. We started with the bony landmarks, uh, then origin, insertion, action. That's muscle number one. Then we'll go another one, that, which is going to be pectoral minor, and then we'll finish with sternocleidomastoid. Uh, turn your mics on. Any questions? Any questions so far before before we go into into moments? I just want to show it on, on my body. It's going to be easier to understand. Anything to say? So far, so good. Kaspars, you can turn your mic and say something. I want to hear your voice. <laughs> okay, Elena, Edgar's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah, but, uh, it's uh, interesting, I think, um, about those two muscles, the biceps and the pectoralis major. It seems like the pectoralis major is kind of restricting the biceps in size because it's uh, overlapping it. The biceps uh, is situated in, in the groove, inside the groove, and the pectoralis major is when I build my biceps, doesn't it uh, somehow is restrained by the 
Brother Maso. Oh yes, yeah. The, very good thinking. This is this is this is what I want to see. This is what I'm here. That's that's very good thinking. So yeah. So what so what you're saying? There's like a tunnel. Okay. There's this yes. uh, this uh, tendon passing through that tunnel, and it could be a bit restricted. It could be other compressors and exactly and those are those are uh, so called the uh, compartment syndromes and we'll take a look at the pectoral minor okay which is uh, which is one layer down which is way more important okay here we are, we are really we're talking about uh, tendon one, tendon of, of a muscle it, there could be a problem okay so there could be uh, usually it's it, it there has to be some sort of injury there's there has to be some sort of inflammatory response okay so it can puff up and then it just it just it's just too thick too big to pass through okay so it's going to be problematic for it to slide and glide with ease okay and if, if these uh, other overlying structures are tight as well of course it's going to restrict the motion okay but this is not that i mean it's not that critical, okay? So, I mean, you, you will just leave your shoulder alone for a while, and, and uh, since we are not really walking on, on our hands, I mean, well, some people do, but um, our upper limbs are not weight-bearing structures, or our legs are. So, I mean, you know, really, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite easy to leave shoulder alone. You know, like it starts to hurt, you leave it alone. No, you know, I mean, nothing. If you're like, let's say, if you're in sports and stuff, well, sometimes it's not happening. Like, let's say, for example, you're some kind of carpenter or something. You have to do overhead work, okay, all the time, and it's just your work. There's nothing you can do about it. You gotta go back to work, and you you keep doing it, you know, and you keep irritating it, and then that's we are going into these chronic, chronic, chronic conditions, which is gonna be it, you will keep it irritating, irritating it. And uh, and uh, this passage is gonna gonna get more and more problematic. This is very good thinking. It's a very good example. That's th that bicipital tendon. It can get irritated and and it can get problematic for it to pass through. Another really good example is supraspinatus tendon. Another very, we talked about that in previous sessions. So this that's actually more common, way more common than bicipital tendon. Ten bicipital tendonitis, we will say, right? Because everything that ends with itis means inflammation so tendonitis means inflammation of the tendon so bicipital tendonitis inflammation of bicipital tendon so supraspinatus supraspinatus is way more prone for tendonitis uh, it, it, it's this like superficial muscle that it's one of the sits muscles it will attach right on top of the uh, shoulder shoulder joint right so it is way easier to to, com to get that compressed because it goes right underneath acromion process which is a bony structure so if you injure that tendon it's gonna get more and more and more problematic for it to pass through but this is very good thinking this is very good we'll take a look at the uh, pectoralis minor which is way more important because Okay, there are no tendons, no nothing. There are nerves and and uh, and uh, and uh, sorry, uh, blood vessels going right underneath pectoral minor, which is when you just think about. It, that's way more important. Okay, so like tendon, it's I mean, okay, well, there it can get irritated or whatever. But if you start compressing nerves or blood vessels, that's a that's a, a pl problem on a different level. Okay, and that spectral minor can 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 do that. Okay, okay. Let's go back to let's go back to anatomy. So pectorals, three heads, right? So so clavicular head, middle head, sternal head, and costal head. So fiber directions, most superficial. I really want you to visualize this three dimensionally. Think about everything in three dimensions. The most superficial part is clavicular. One layer deeper, sternal, and the deepest one is uh, is uh, the uh, coastal, right? Think about think about uh, the fiber direction, right? So clavicular head, what could it do? Obviously, it will pull pull the arm up like this, right? So so that's more like flexion, horizontal adduction. So it's gonna produce uh, either pure flexion or horizontal adduction. That's clavicular head. Sternal head. Is going to produce internal rotation and and horizontal, horizontal. We call it horizontal adduction. Okay, horizontal abduction, meaning going away. Horizontal adduction, A D D, adduction going closer, 
closer towards the body, right? So that's really like I mean, two most important mm, two most important functions of the pectorals are internal rotation and adduction. That's it, and flexion as well. I mean, you know, it's it's not the most powerful flexor, but it, it does produce flexion as well. So, which is kind of like under under that 45 de degree type of flexion. It's not pure flexion. Pure flexion would be like just just go, going straight up. That's pure flexion. Right? So it's it's not it is not it does not really do that type. It's it, it does a little bit under under an angle, but it will definitely assist with the flexion for sure. So once again, clavicular head flexion, adduction, sternal head adduction and internal rotation right and uh and the coastal head adduction and and again i mean the same thing but just a just a different angle right so you're just gonna pull it closer towards the body and internally rotate so yes so adducts adduction adduction of the uh, glenohumeral joint just bring it closer to, towards the body or horizon uh we can distinguish a little bit right so pure adduction okay let me show this one more time so pure abduction and adduction. This is uh, talking shoulder joint. This is pure abduction and pure adduction. So going sideways up, abduction going sideways down, closer towards the body, abduction. So pectorals, especially lower head, is going to do just pure adduction, just just moving it closer towards the body. Uh, sternal head is going to produce mostly horizontal adduction. So horizontally adduct and abduct. And internal rotation. All of them, all all three heads are gonna internally rotate it, right? So it, it pulls it internally, right? So those are the most important uh, functions. There is actually more. I'm just looking at another source. Uh, this is this comes from another book. Um, Yes, another another student just messaged. Okay, so uh, it actually has uh, fifteen functions. Okay, so I mean it's uh, it just uh, we're we're really just scratching the surface. We're really just uh, just um, we don't have to go too much into depth, right? So just just horizontal uh, horizontal adduction adduction pure adduction internal rotation and flexion as well. Right, so depending on which fibers are we talking about, just remember that it has three different uh, directions, and depending on which which uh, muscle fibers are we tightening, that's where it goes. Right, medial rotation, flexion. Next, see, like uh, this other source actually says that it 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 does produce extension as well. So I'm thinking about like how would that how would that be extension, but it does. It does uh, when you when uh, we'll probably take a look at three-dimensional body extension. Okay, so uh, flexion and extension. So you would think pectorals. How how could it do extension? But it does. <laughs> it it does a little bit of extension as well, um, which is not the main function. You, like I mean, you can even forget that it's not. It's not the main one. Main ones are internally rotate, horizontally adduct. That's pectoralis major. Uh, let's go to pectoralis minor, which is one layer down. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, three-dimensional body first. Okay, so so let's remove. Um, Let's remove pectoralis major. So once again, the, like the pronunciation, some people will say uh, pectorals. Pe pectorals. I mean, you, you shouldn't use that word. Pectorals. Uh, uh, it's it's too vague. Uh, say either pectorals um, pectorals major. That will be kind of like a Englishified version or pectoralis major. That would be more like Latin. Uh, it's your choice. I, I would I go with um, pectoralis ma uh, major. So it's kind of like right in between. So uh, we go one layer down, and uh, oh, right there. Okay, here we go. Pectoralis minor. Let's color all the structures right there. And here you can already see where you can sort of already see the attachments. Okay, you can see that it uh, it comes off of the ribs. 
and it does attach the coracoid process. We talked about that structure at the beginning. That is this uh, hook-like hook -like structure. This is a view from the top. That's the uh, shoulder blade, that's the scapula. And there are three muscles that attach to this, uh, this hook, uh, which are, what do you think? Actually, hang on, okay, let's go, let's go to, maybe Edgar's nose. He's more kind of like anatomy guy. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just speculating. Turn your mic on. What do you think? Let's just, let's just, let's just think a little bit. What could attach to this? What structures could attach? That's like a, like a little quiz. Uh, coracoid process. I told you that's the structure that's not that easily palpable. Right underneath the clavicle. So what muscles could be in that region? Three muscles do attach to that. So we already know that pectoralis minor does attach to that. What else? What do you think? Maybe two of those six muscles, no? No. No, no. Okay. So six muscles, six muscles, no, no, no. Six muscles, there are four, uh, four six muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis from the front. They all do attach to scapula, but different parts, right? So uh, this is uh, more, 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 uh, more uh, anterior part and it's quite away quite far away actually six muscles those are the muscles that uh, are really really close to shoulder joint they really they just cut the shoulder joint that's why they are really really important for stability so they are not really in, in the region they're actually they are in the region but the uh, uh, subscapularis is more deep and the other ones are actually from the other side so they, they just can't there's no way what what else what do you think I think there was one muscle for uh, synergist with the biceps muscle. Yes. Uh, Corocobrachia or yes, something like that. Yes, that's another one. Corocobrachia also very good. So that's uh, cora uh, what did, So that's the, think about the name. Corocobrachialis. Mm. What could that be? Corocobrachialis. Brachium. Brachialis, that's the arm. Brachialis. Coraco, that's coracoid process. Like the name says it all. It's a it comes from coracoid process to brachium. You know, a lot of muscles we will have the attachments right in, in the name, right? So, for example, ste that's the next muscle, by the way. We'll take a look at it. Sternocleidomastoid. It says all, all attachment points in the, in the name. It comes from mastoid process. It will attach to sternum and clavicle. Sternocleidomastoid, you know, like that's that's what it is. It has two heads. We'll take a look at that in a bit, but you know, so it, sometimes it like it's not no puzzle there. You know, like the name says it all, really. And, and then if you have a little bit, a little bit of some sort of knowledge, you are able to figure it out. So very good. So that's two. So coracoid process, uh, pectoralis minor and coracobrachialis. I'll show that in three-dimensional body in a bit, but so one and two. What uh, another one? What do you think? What's in the region? What do you think? What muscles are in the region? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, how about biceps? And biceps brachy. <laughs> oh, biceps, yes. Uh, short. <laughs> yeah, short head, right? So short head with the biceps. So long head goes through that bicipital groove right on top. It mm -hmm. does insert into that, uh, into the top of the joint actually, um, glenohumeral joint, short head goes right, right, right above, right, I mean, right towards that uh, coracoid process and that's it. So three muscles, uh, uh, coracobrachialis, short head of the, of the biceps and, uh, and uh, pe pectoralis minor, those three muscles. So th this is again, I mean, very good way to remember Remember that this structure does has these three muscles attaching to it. That already, you know, like it's it already. There's so, you know, almost like a, like a like a little uh, platform for you guys to push off a bit, right? Just remember that this this bony structure has these three muscles attaching to it, and then like this shoulder region, upper chest region is already like becoming already like one clearer you know it's that's one step you know closer to to, to to putting that puzzle together very good okay so let's go back to the screen let's take a look at that so right there so we have pectoral minor. let's i think i had that on the other side i think right there 
Oh, right there. That's that's Croco brachialis. Um, okay, let's get all of them. So that's the uh, right sides, um, right there, bits of brachy, okay, right there. Um, and uh, pectoralis minor. You didn't make the screen share, so we oh. can't see. Oh, that's good, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, that's that's good. <laughs> Like one of the other lectures, I was just just talking and talking, and there's not nothing happening. I'm just talking, right? So this is very good. Yeah, you, and that's very good. If something's happening, something like that happens, tell me right away, please. And thank you. Okay, so so this is right side, right side of the body, and here we can see all of them, all these three muscles attaching to that corticoid process. So this is kind of like the view from the top. Uh, so that's the clavicle, that's the uh, humeral head, and that's the uh, scapula. And that once again, that sca scapula has this, uh, this like a hook, like a hook-like uh, outgrowth towards the front. And, and it gives attachments to three muscles, right? Three muscles, pectorals minor. Okay, let's remove that. Biceps. Okay, so it's here. Here you can see both heads of the biceps. See, like one of them, that's the long head. It goes right on top of the joint, and it does attach. Actually, the actually it does attach to to, uh, to the capsule of uh, of a shoulder joint, glenohumeral joint, to be exact, and the uh, superior uh, superior glenoid tubercle. Uh, and the other head. See, the other head goes straight up, and it does attach to coracoid process. And right underneath we have cor coraco brachialis right there. It, it's it's kind of sorry about that. Right there. So that's the uh, that's the other other muscle. That's coraco brachialis. It's very uh, very thin. Very it's like a string like um, muscle. People that uh, that have very very well built arms, you can actually see that. Um, so, uh, so it goes right kind of under, uh, maybe. So biceps, biceps, and there's another one right underneath here, right underneath. There's um, when you when you have to kind of adduct, and then you will, then you can actually palpate it. Once again, I strongly recommend you to do this when there if there is some kind of a kind of a um, structure or something try to palpate it go right right at it try to go right underneath the my biceps and this that i can i can feel it right there there's there's this belly belly so you'll you'll be able to palpate one head of the biceps other head of the biceps and then go right kind of underneath the medial head of the biceps and there's going to be another belly and that's the one, that's the one, that's Coroca brachialis. And it goes right kind of from middle portion, middle portion of biceps and right top, right on top, right on top of that uh, brachia, brachialis, right? So so it comes, uh, uh, all these three structures are gonna go straight to that coracoid process, which is sort of like, really, it looks like a hook, you know? It, it, it comes like, like that, okay? Um, right underneath lateral clavicle and right kind of anterior, medial from uh, from the uh, shoulder joint okay all right I think uh, I think another another one of us is gonna join in a bit he just messaged me message me let's see if he, if he succeeds we'll just we'll just keep talking and see if he does it okay uh, let's go back to screen share uh, so uh, so yes so pectoral is minor here we have it. We will take a look at the uh, origin insertion uh, and action in a bit. Let's just uh, take a look at this three-dimensional three body for for a moment. Okay, so obviously we can see that it comes off of the ribs. We will see which ribs in particular in a bit, and it does attach to uh, uh, to this uh, coracoid process. Uh, and uh, just uh, just think about the action. What could it do? You know. So, and once again, which is which point? Uh, so it has two two uh, attachment points, right? So one could be origin. One could, the other one could be uh, 
um, in search and then we can actually flip them around, right? So what do you think? Which one is going to be origin and which, was, which one is going to be in search? And Sorry, will you share your screen? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here we go. All right, so so the uh, pectoralis minor right there, we can see that it uh, comes off of the uh, ribs and then it does attach to um, coracoid process. And just looking at this uh, three-dimensional body, what do you think? What do you think? What kind of action is, gonna, is it going to produce? And uh, first of all, which attachment is going to be origin and which attachment is going to be insertion? Uh, so this is... Uh, this is sort of a question to you guys. You don't have to answer it. You can, you know, do your own thinking. Um, uh, once again, that, that's the basic basics. Origin is usually going to be the structure, the, the attachment point that is going to be least uh, mobile, right? So, and in this case, obviously, ribs are not going to be as mobile as this coracoid process. So, well, and there, you, there you have it, right? So this should be uh, origin. This should be where the muscle starts. Coracoid process should be where it ends, right? So insertion is usually that attachment point that is going to be more mobile, more movable. Uh, and uh, just by, by thinking about it, so we can already see that this is the region, that's the insertion. What, what, what action could it possibly do? So basically, it will act on scapula, right? So it will, it will do something with the scapula. It will pull on scapula. What could it do? So we, we are looking right at the uh, right at the front of the body right there. So obviously it will pull it will pull shoulder blade towards the front and it will pull to, pull it towards the uh, towards kind of like towards the ground right. Uh, and that's basically it protraction of the scapula and down downward uh, kind of depression of the scapula. Those are going to be two mo most important uh, two most important actions. Let's take a look at it. On this uh, on this image here, right there, pectoralis minor. Once again, so use uh, use colors, okay? Use colors, red, blue, and green. Origin, that's red. Ribs three through five, okay? Ribs three through five. So this is the first rib, second, third, fourth. Fifth, so third, fourth, and fifth rib. Okay, these three ribs. To be more exact, anterior lateral por portion. So what does that say? Anterior lateral portion. Anterior meaning towards the front, right? So the, this this is the front of the body. So uh, closer towards the front surface, and uh, lateral meaning away from center of the body, okay? So if this is the center, so this would be, so like, let's say medial, medial portion, and this would be kind of like the lateral portion. So anterior lateral, anterior lateral surface of ribs, three, four, and five. That's the origin, okay? It inserts into coracoid process of the scapula, right there. To be more exact, medial aspect. And we can see that here in this image, actually. Let's zoom in. See, it, does, it doesn't occupy the whole, the whole uh, coracoid process. It, um, it does, uh, so that's, that's the coracoid process. See, it, it does occupy more kind of like more medial. So again, once again, medial uh, uh, meaning closer towards the center of the body. So it does attach kind of like the, at the medial, medial facet, at the medial portion of the coracoid process. And obviously that, that leaves all this other, other area for the other muscles to attach, right? So once again, we had coracobrachialis and we had biceps brachii, right? So they are gonna, gonna occupy this portion here. Okay, action. Action, we go green usually. It stabilizes scapula, okay? So if we, 
if we don't, uh, so isometric contraction, iso, isometric. So, okay, this is this is a little bit, we, we are going off the topic a little bit, but uh, there are three types of contractions. So there is isometric, there's concentric, and there's eccentric contractions. Um, isometric, as the name states, isometric. What is iso? Iso is sort of like status quo, right? So there's like nothing's happening, okay? So it, 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 it is like the length. Length is... Uh, the way it is, it, it stays the same length, but uh, but there is contraction happening. So it is working, but it doesn't change uh, change uh, like it doesn't shorten or it doesn't el elongate. Um, and the, and isometric contraction is required for any type of stabilization. So if if the, if you say that there is a, like one of the functions is stabilization, there has to be some muscles will do isometric contraction. So uh, not uh, not changing the uh, length of the muscle belly. So mus muscle is not gonna shorten or elongate or whatever. It is just gonna keep it keep that structure immovable, immobile. And then there is concentric. I I hope you 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 should you should already uh, know some of this stuff. But I mean maybe you have heard about it, maybe you didn't. This is sort of like a little review. Concentric. And eccentric. So concentric. That's uh, muscle belly shortening. Okay. Concentric contraction meaning uh, meaning muscle belly is shortening. Eccentric contraction muscle belly is elongating. Okay. Right there. So concentric, eccentric, and isometric. If you see that uh, uh, some function of the muscle is going to be uh, some sort of stabilization of something, some structure, there has to be isometric contraction. It just doesn't work any other way. Uh, okay, so st st it will stabilize scapula for our movements. Okay, uh, then it will depress and downwardly rotate scapula, as well as it will assist in scapular protraction. Um, I mean, let's. This this is just a little bit too much too, uh, too much information. Let's just remember that it does stabilize scapula. It does depress it, right? So it does pull it down, and it will. It does protract it as well, and it does rotate it downwardly. Um, let's review this one more time. Okay, I, I know I showed this two three times at least. But this is quite important. Let's take a look at it one more time. What does what does upward rotation mean, and what does downward rotation mean? So this is scapula. Okay. Uh, think about. So that's the. Uh, let's go with blue. Okay. Right there. That's the joint. That's the, These are the articulating surfaces. So, so the humeral head and glenoid cavity. So uh, think about uh, this glenoid cavity going up, up towards the ceiling. So so shoulder blade has to rotate kind of like this, up. Okay, so upward rotation. That uh, if if this uh, if this um, if the scapula is tilting so like backwards. Okay, so it, it is going to rotate kind of like this. It is going to tilt. So this uh, glenoid cavity will start to face gradually, start facing facing the ceiling. And this is called upward rotation. So this is upward rotation. Downward rotation obviously is the opposite, okay? So downward rotation is when you when you turn that uh, glenoid cavity closer towards the ground. So this is key, this is a key concept. Uh, try to remember this one. Upward rotation, downward rotation. So, and then when you see some, something like in some scientific literature where, where they will talk talk about sh uh, shoulder movement, scapular rotation, uh, you will know what is upward rotation, what is downward rotation. Don't confuse this. It's it's very easy to confuse this stuff. Um, okay, let's go back. And that's pretty much it. These are the functions. Uh, this is the uh, pectoralis minor. 
So once again, it does originate from ribs three through five, anterior lateral portion, inserts into coracoid process of scapula, medial aspect in particular. Uh, it does stabilize scapula for arm movements. It does depress, downwardly rotate the scapula, and it does protract the scapula. Um, both of these nerve, uh, both of these muscles, pectoralis minor and pectoralis major, are innervated by medial pectoral nerve. Um, the um, pectoralis major does have a branch of lateral pectoral nerve as well. So this is, um, if you're trying to memorize nerves, this would be a good way to start. Start with pectorals, uh, um, the biggest muscles in the body, right? So I mean. Uh, what, what better way to start? Uh, medial and lateral pectoral nerve for for pectoralis major. Sorry, blue. Oh, purple. So medial and lateral pectoral nerve for pectoralis major. Only medial, only medial nerve. for pectoralis minor, okay? Good, that's pectoralis major, that's pectoralis minor. We talked about uh, compression, okay? So um, some sort of condition uh, which involves underlying structures uh, being compressed. And, um, and so there, there are a couple of examples, okay? So uh, there could be uh, impingement of the uh, uh, tendon uh, as uh, Edgar said, re that was a really good example. Uh, so bicep tendonitis, uh, uh, long head of biceps could be uh, somehow irritated. Uh, it could be compressed uh, by overlying structures. Uh, supraspinatus tendon, uh, very common. Uh, pectoralis minor uh, can, uh, um, can, pectoralis minor can uh, uh, be part of the problem, which is called uh, Rocky Cotlet syndrome, maybe you have heard about that. Let me, TOS in short, short. TOS, Thoracic Outlet Syndrome. There is one video, one of my videos where I talk about this. It, it does explain it all pretty much. Uh, there are a couple of structures that com can compress uh, the, um, underlying nerve structures, so uh, brachial plex plex plexus in particular. So uh, pectoralis minor can compress it, uh, clavic clavicle itself can, can compress it, uh, tight scaling muscles can compress it, and uh, uh, extra cervical rib can compress it. So four uh, different, uh, four different things could, uh, could, uh, could be part of it, but uh, tight chest muscles, uh, and that's uh, particularly for, um, you know, uh, people that uh, lift weights, right? So actually, you know what? Let me show you this. Let me show. This is very good. I can actually show you nerve structures and uh, right there, cardiovascular system. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not the right view. Okay, very nice. Cardiovascular system and nerve system. Okay, here we go. Okay, and let's take a look at this. So this is a pectoralis minor right there. And you can see that it lies right, right on top of a Quite a few, quite a few very important structures. Okay, so this is this is probably a little bit too much. Let me try to rem remove some of these guys. Okay, so some of the uh, more superficial, uh, right there. Actually, you know what? Let's let's remove. Let's remove this guy as well. Right there, you can see that it goes right on top of a major vein, major artery, and uh, a lot of nerves. Okay, and this is actually that's a, that's brachial plexus. So if we have a, if we have tight pectoralis minor, what 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 is going to happen? Okay, what's what what will happen? It will uh, pull on that uh, 
right there. It will pull on that shoulder blade towards the front and it will pull it downwards. And as we, as, as we do that, it will start to compress all these underlying structures, okay? And uh, that's, and so this condition, as I said, this condition has a name. It is called thoracic outlet syndrome. So there are a couple of other um, examples. Uh, so clavicle itself can compress it, okay? So the clavicular bone can compress it. Uh, so it's basically depressed clavicle. Scalene muscles, um, which are not, I, I'm not gonna highlight them. Uh, they are found right, right at the side of the neck. Uh, uh, they will actually, um, brachial plexus is going to be right underneath anterior scaly muscle, right between uh, medial, uh, me, middle and uh, anterior scaly muscles. And if they are tight, uh, they're just going to compress uh, brachial plexus. And then sometimes, uh, which is a, sort of like a, like a, um, not deformity, it's not, not deformity, it's like a, not not even pathology sometimes uh, sometimes you can have an extra cervical rib so you can uh, you can be born with another rib so you, you may actually not have uh, 12 ribs you may actually have another rib right on top uh, here uh, which is kind of like not normal not uh, not a normal condition uh, and this is gonna just basically just create a create a problem because there's just not enough space for all these structures. There's just not enough space for another rib here. And that rib can uh, compress all these structures as well. So just uh, just know that uh, pectorals uh, can be um, another reason for uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, which is, which is basically the condition is all sorts of like numbness, tingling down the arm. Um, so it can be sensory, it can be uh, muscular, uh, just a muscular, either a muscular tightness or muscular cramps or that type of stuff. So anything kind of like anything referring down towards towards the uh, the sh shoulder into into the armpit, down the arm into the fingers, any type of uh, uh, weird sensations, uh, which is you know like obviously nerves are compressed, so you will have that. You will have either um, sensory function impairment or uh, or uh, motor function impairment, right? Or uh, let's say, for example, if blood supply is, uh, again, if blood supply is uh, restricted, so you could actually see like bluish fingers and that type of stuff. And that's, that's quite extreme. I mean, that has to be very, very tight uh, restriction, very, uh, quite a bit of a, quite a good, quite a bit of a compression there, okay? Let's, uh, let's quickly go chat a bit and we'll, we'll go with the, with the last muscle and that's it for today. So it's already... Yeah, we'll, we'll probably go another probably 15 minutes and that's it. So usually usually we do like uh, 90 minutes, ni between 90 minutes and two hours. So 90 minutes, kind of 20 minutes. So sometimes we, we do a quick break in between, but th today we're just going straight through. <laughs> um, any questions? Anything? Anything at all? All good? Let's go. Let's go. Last muscle, and then we'll probably have a quick chat for five minutes, and then that's it. Basta. Let's go back to screen share. All right. Last one. Last one. We have sternocleidomastoid. So this you can see it's uh, it looks a bit different, huh? So this is from um, Nikita Vizhnyak's, uh book again uh, and this is his newest version uh, newer version um for some reason I, I took it from there anyways the information like it's all the same information it's not nothing really will change in that regard so sternocleidomastoid as i said uh basically the name says it all right so sterno sterno cleido mastoid S C M, sterno. What's sterno? Sterno, sterno, right? So that's sterno. Sterno. Cleido, clavicle, clavicle. Mastoid, mastoid process, right? So that's mastoid process. Mastoid process. That's one of the uh, structures I showed you at the beginning.
So mustoid process is part of the temporal bone. Let's go with some other color. I don't know. Let's go purple, for example, right there. So that's right there. That's temporal bone. So there's another there's another structure that go, grows outwards, right? This is this is called styloid process. Don't confuse these guys, okay? So there's styloid process and mustoid process, completely different structures, but uh, they are both in the same region. So mustoid process is kind of like right here. And there's another process which is called styloid process. Mustoid process is the bigger one bigger one okay okay all right so let's start with the origin origin red okay origin is red sternal head and clavicular head um it has two heads okay so it has sternal obviously originating from sternum sterno sternum clavicular head Clado. Clavicular head uh, originating from clavicle. Sternal head uh, originates from manubrium of sternum. Remember, we, uh, I said that uh, sternum has three parts one, two, three. The most superficial is manubrium, which looks kind of something like this. Then the body, and then xiphoid process. Okay, so this, the highest one. It's called manubrium. And then we have, actually, let's, why not? Let me show it all here. And then we have clavicle. So this would be the clavicle. And then clavicular head will, so it, it, it does originate from medial portion. Medial portion, like let's say if, if we divide clavicle in two parts, lateral, and medial, medial portion is the one, okay. Uh, and it inserts into mastoid process, mastoid process. Um, mastoid process, that's the biggest one. Uh, um, sorry, 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 that's nothing but the blue, okay, here we go. Insertion, mastoid process. But, okay, so I mean, uh, Wisniak, that's, uh, I mean, in his books, he usually shows the most, uh, the, like the, the most important structures, the most important attachment points, most important actions. But you can see that uh, it does attach a little bit. Uh, so this, this is mostly a process, okay? So we, we can see that uh, it does come out a little bit more than that, okay? It, 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 it does not attach only to mustard process. What about the rest? What about the, what about this portion? So what's up with that, huh? Uh, remember, I told you that uh, mustard with this guy. So temporal bone and uh, occipital bone will have these ridges. Okay, let's, let me first, oh, we don't need nerves, we don't need, we don't need this. Okay, let's move in. Let's, let's move in a bit. Right there. You can see that uh, there are these ridges there. On, uh, on the back of the skull. And actually, according to, uh, to this image here, you can see that it does not attach only to mastoid process, it does attach to occipital bone as well, a little bit at least, right? So, and in particular, we are talking about these, so these these two right there, they are, uh, there's one on top, okay, let me, now, if, if you know exactly what I'm talking about, let me, let me show it here. Okay, right there. I'm talking about these ridges here, right there. So see, there's one on top and there's one on the bottom. And then there's, then there's this sort of like a pump up, like like a little hill right in between. This little hill right in between is called external occipital protuberance. 
y o pi. Hang on, hang on a second. I think my dog is doing something, something weird. Sorry about that. My dog likes to. That's that's her new thing. She likes to. She likes to eat uh, floor borders. You know, she likes to chew on them. <laughs> okay, so external occipital protuberance, superior nuchal line, and inferior nuchal line. Superior nuchal line. and inferior obviously superior the one that's above inferior the one that's below inferior nuchal line so in the stenocleidomastoid where is it I'll show you sorry about that let me just quickly go <clears throat> yes, exactly. All right, so uh, so superior nuchal and it does extend a little bit farther than that. Okay, so so here, I mean, like we are looking at the back. So the most prominent uh, part of superior nuchal line is going to be facing backwards. Okay, uh, it will go laterally as well. So the the part on the uh, occipital bone that uh, that that's like a ridge. You can you can actually palpate that. We we talked about it last time. So it does uh, it does occupy this uh, once again lateral portion, not the whole thing, but lateral portion, lateral lateral portion of superior nuchal line on uh, this is occiput occipital bone, right? So this this bone here is occipital bone. So actually, to be more more correct, the more more exact um, muscle does attach. Okay, like actually, let's let's go. St let's start from the beginning. So muscle has two heads. It has sternal head and it has clavicular head. Uh, let's start with the uh, with the origin. So here we can see that the sternal head is. Uh, looks smaller. It looks thinner here. It it looks more like round, uh, more like a rounder belly, and it's not. It it doesn't look here as as big as the other one, right? So sternal head originates straight off of the uh, manubrium, uh, lateral lateral superior lateral aspect of manubrium. Then the uh, clavicular head um, originates from. Uh, medial, medial half, medial and superior. So medial half of the uh, clavicle at the superior, uh, superior portion of the clavicle. So on top of the clavicle, closer towards the center. So that that uh, that part, uh, it does insert. It does insert into the mastoid process. Let's let's remove this so you can see that right there. Mastoid process, that's that bump right there. Right there, you can see that bump. Mastoid process and superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. Right there. So mastoid process, and then it extends a little bit farther. And that's the insertion. Uh, once again, insertion is the more mobile point. That's the, that's the point that's going to move a little bit more. So what do you think about the action? What could it do? Okay. And this is where we will stop. And this is the last point I want to make, and uh, and we will we will be done for today. So, what do you think? What what do you think about the action? What could it possibly do? I mean, here here's here's the answer. But uh, let me switch to switch to my video in a bit, and uh, and then I'll show it show it on my body, so it's hundred percent clear. 
So action, rotation the head, the contralateral side, lateral flexion to ipsilateral side, and bilateral action, neck flexion and capital extension. Okay, so there, there are quite a few funny words here, okay? So uh, bilateral, ipsilateral, contralateral, uh, in in uh, in my uh, in in previous uh, sessions, uh, I was tr I was really trying hard for you guys to uh, make this concept clear. What is ipsilateral? You know, uh, what is um, contralateral? Ipsilateral? Uh, unilateral? Bilateral? Let's let's review this one more time, and then we'll put this puzzle together. Okay, um, let's go back to video, and then I'll. Hopefully, I'll be able to explain that. And this is where we will stop. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's let's go unilaterally. Okay, unilaterally. Unilaterally meaning on only one side. Bilaterally meaning both sides. Okay, so unilateral action, action on one side. Bilateral action, meaning action on both sides, okay? So obviously, unilaterally, meaning only one side muscle is gonna, is gonna contract, okay? Uh, bilateral, bilateral action, meaning both sides will contract. So let's start with bilateral. Bilateral meaning both side muscles are flexing. Bilaterally, it will flex the neck because obviously it will, we think about uh, mustate process going downward. So you, you're just pulling on that mustate process closer towards the chest. So that's the flexion, cer cervical flexion, flexion of the neck. Uh, as well, elevation of the sternum, and it will assist in forced inhalation. So one of the apical breathing muscles, right? So it will actually elevate the chest. Like let's say if, if head is immobile, if we are not really moving the head, we contract contract uh, both sides bellies it'll actually pull on the ribs right so we get this assisted breath right so this that's not the, not the only muscle that's gonna do that there are quite a few other ones uh, for example upper trapezius uh, scalenes uh, scalene muscles uh, levator scapula uh, sternocleidomastoid so there are quite a few of these you know apical breathing muscles stress muscles so to say so basically bilaterally uh, just think about neck flexion. That's the most important. And as well, well, you know, that's reverse function. You can say that it will elevate the ribs as well. Unilaterally, unilaterally, it will do contralateral, contralateral cervical rotation and ipsilateral cervical flexion. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, what does that mean? Okay, contralateral cervical rotation. This side, okay, okay, right there, you can see it on me, right there, this side muscle, you can already see, as, as I turn my head away, it pops out, I turn it towards the other side, that means contralateral, this would be ipsilateral, um, this side muscle, this is the left side, this is the right side, left side muscle does rotate the head, towards the other side, towards the opposite side. If it would be rotating the head towards the same side, we would say it does ipsilateral rotation. This is ipsilateral rotation. This is contralateral rotation. And you can clearly see it just, it just pops out right away. So I, I rotate my neck towards the other side, it comes out. This is, you, you, you can feel it on yourself. This is the best way to do this, okay? So just play with yourself and, and you will see right away. And that, Totally makes sense. Just think about think about these two points coming closer. So this point is behind the ear, and this point is kind of like anteriorly. These two points are shortening. Obviously, it will be basically just kind of like pulling your ear towards towards the chest, right there. That's what's happening. You're pulling your ear towards towards kind of like anterior chest, and you're rotating that head away. So, ipsilaterally ipsilaterally, not bilaterally, ipsilaterally, this muscle will contralaterally rotate the head, contralaterally rotate the neck, as well, ipsilaterally flex the head, okay, so ipsilaterally, ipsilaterally uh, flex the neck, 
ipsilaterally meaning towards the same side. As a combined motion, we get this. Okay, so see, like I'm flexing my head towards this side shoulder, and I'm turning my head away. So that's com combined motion. This is basic. That, that's that's the action of the muscle. It is this com combined motion of lateral flexion towards the same side and rotation away. Right there. Bilaterally flexion. Bilaterally, it will elevate the chest. Breathing. Okay. That's it. This this is I mean probably quite a, quite a bit of information. Try to play with these muscles. Try to, I mean even pectorals. And quite uh, quite easy. Oh, I call these are very superficial muscles. This is why I'm like we are at first we are going with the most the easiest palpable muscles, the easiest palpable structures. Uh, it's it's easy to find them on yourself. Play with them. Do all these uh, rotations, flexion, extension, all these movements. Uh, feel for that movement to happen. Feel that clavicular head as you go up. Feel that sternal head as you go in. And uh, may maybe you can feel, you know, ster uh, the coastal uh, coastal fibers are going to be deeper, so maybe you won't feel them. But you know, play play around a little bit with with arm movements. Play around a little bit with with neck movements. Uh, feel that sternocleidomastoid muscle pop out. Um, pectorals. You know, you're not going to be able to feel that. Uh, it's it's not not easy even to palpate that uh, coracoid process. It's it's quite a challenge. It's but the more more experienced people, you, you know, therapists, you like I for for example, like I feel it right away. It's right there, kind of like right there. Just know approximately where it is. That's a good start, you know. And remember that coracoid process has three muscles attaching to it. So biceps, biceps short head, coracobrachialis, and pectoralis minor. Uh, what other? So this is kind of like a quick overview uh, b before we end. So the structures we talked about today, mastoid process right behind the ear. Okay. Uh, so once again, sternum. Sternum has three parts: manubrium, body, xiphoid process. Then we have clavicle. Then we have humerus. Humerus will have a bicipital groove. Bicipital groove has lateral lip, medial lip. Lateral lip will will uh, will be a pectoralis major attachment, right? And pectoralis major is the main internal rotator. Um, actually, it's not the main uh, most important internal rotator. Um, the the most powerful internal rotator is subscapularis. Actually, people will think that uh, the pectoralis major not really. Uh, subscapularis is shorter. It just has that leverage. It has, it has the has more power. But pectoralis are one of the most important internal rotators, right? So think about the internal rotation and adduction. That's what it does, right? As well, it will do uh, kind of flexion uh, and actually a little bit of extension as well. So horizontal adduction, uh, adduction just bringing your arm closer towards the body, flexion, internal rotation, extension as well. So basically getting your arm closer towards the body, that's pectorals, right? Pectorals minor right underneath. Uh, originating from ribs, ribs three to five, inserting into coracoid process once again, right? So structures you should be remember from today's lecture, uh, mastoid process, coracoid process, bicipital groove. Bicipital groove has medial lip, lateral lip. Um, sternum, right? Sternum, coastal cartilages. Um, think about everything three-dimensionally. Try to visualize that right underneath pectoralis minor, we have nerves, we have uh, blood vessels, all that stuff. So if it's tight, it will push on it, it will press on it, right? Uh, and uh, and um, apical breathing, very important point, okay? So uh, sternocleidomastoid is one of the uh, apical breathing muscles. Um, very common for trigger points, very common. Um, and once again, uh, uh, the outer unit muscles. All these outer, uh, all these muscles are outer unit muscles that we talked about. Uh, pectorals, both pectoral muscles, sternocleidomastoid. All of them are outer unit muscles. So they will be. Um, they are actually quite powerful. But if you overwork them, they 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 uh, develop this particular point in it. You press on it, and it recreates this pattern, right? Uh, sternocleidomastoid, 
this one this one is a funny one okay so this uh, I have seen this a lot in my practice this one uh, uh, shoots right up uh, behind the ear and towards towards the forehead right right in your forehead some people think they have a headache which is uh, really just a trigger point in sternocleid master you wor work it out and headache's gone miracle you know magic uh, it's not very pleasant to work with sternocleid master you can you can try to do that yourself a little bit uh, try to go all, uh, you can actually separate both heads you can feel uh, feel uh, sternal head you can feel a clavicular head you can easily separate them I mean, at least you should. Some people can't. Some for some people just want the thick, you know, structure, right? So there's no movement, right? And obviously there's going to be all this trigger point situation and whatever. Uh, so you can actually walk walk up the belly, bit by bit, and maybe you will feel this this particular. For actually, I have a little bit here myself. There's this one fiber. It goes right up behind the ear, kind of right, kind of here. That's it. If if you press on it does it does recreate this you, typical pattern is behind the ear, up kind of up up the head and uh, towards towards the forehead. Sternal head has different pattern. Clavicular head has different pattern. That's uh, it's a way to distinguish that. One head does a bilateral um, pain. There's bilateral pain referral. One one head has only one one side. Okay, that's a lot of information. Turn your mics and let's have a quick last words and that's it. We'll, we'll end. <coughs> anything, anything to say? Maybe I have one clarification question about this sternocleid mastoidus. Uh, when the bilateral, flag, uh, bilateral contraction is happening, I think in this slide where the actions was mentioned, there was a written uh, reflection of the head and also another Action extension of something or or am I wrong? Go back. To, let's see what he has here. This is his newest book. Let let me see quickly what he has. Um, um, there, as I said, some some books will have different books will have different uh, different. Um, Anatomy, you know, like they, they will they will talk about different things. Uh, first of all, like you know, some muscles. Like I, I gave an example for pectorals. You will see that some some actually distinguish two heads, some distinguish three heads. Some some don't co talk about heads at all. For static oh, no, muscles, it's the same. This, this same book you showed, this uh, Vision X book. I think it was mentioned when you showed the slide. I, I think I saw. Yeah. Let's go back to slide. Let's see. Um, Okay, so uh, so yes, uh, so rotation of the head to control lateral side, lateral flexion to ipsilateral side, and bilateral action, neck flexion, and capital extension. Capital Correct. extension. Cap capital, okay, capital extension is basically tilting. Um, okay, I, I know what you mean. Capital extension. Okay, so capital extension means, uh, uh, so cervical neck, we can divide in two parts. Okay, so lower part, lower part, uh, uh, on lower part, we will clearly we will act. Uh, there's only flexion possible, just biomechanically. To connect these two points, and only flexion is possible. But the very okay, okay we're we're getting a little bit more technical. I know exactly what you mean. So uh, there are anatomical, physi 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 physiological uh, curves in your body. Mostly, we we talk only about. Uh, these two, these two most obvious ones. So, uh, trachykyphosis and lumbar lordosis, right? So, trachykyphosis is this this one, right? So that's trachykyphosis, lumbar lordosis, right there. That's lumbar lordosis. But there are two other ones, so there are actually four of them, right? So, trachy trachykyphosis, lumbar lordosis, and then sacral kyphosis again, and then cervical lordosis again. So cervical uh, cervical spine makes where well, you can see it on me, right? So it, there's actually bent, it's it's bent uh, backwards, okay? So just this little last part, as you once again think about right there, mastoid process and uh, and uh, sternum, 
connect these two points. So you will actually flex, you will actually flex lower part of the uh, neck. You will actually extend upper part of the neck. You see what I mean? Like yes, this. I see. Yeah, right there. So, so, so capital extension is just uh, just this last uh, last portion right there. So you can, as you flex the fibers, uh, as you contract the fibers, you can actually tilt tilt that head backwards a little bit, right? So that's what he means. So mostly it's gonna be flexion, but we can we can act on capital extension as well. So you can actually we can actually do a, a little bit that tilt backwards, okay? So it will actually increase that lordotic curve of the, of the neck. Actually, if, if yeah. it's tight, it will increase that lordotic curve, which is not good. I mean, tight sternocle animus is never good. It's this, uh, you know, head for forward posture, basically. That's what it is. That's, you know, uh, overworked sternocle animus muscles is this posture. And so <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll picture you like the, like the typical, typical thing, right? So, the, you know, computer work and all that. It's forward, you know, forward rotated shoulders, apical breathing, right? So all these muscles are super tight, and this capital extension, lower neck flexion, right there. Protracted chin. Protracted chin means tight sternocleidomastoid, for sure. There's, there's no doubt about it, and those, those people will have trigger points. Those people will have that headache that they think that they have a headache, and then they come to me and I work these guys out and like headache disappears and they're like, wow, where, so where did that come from? But that's where it comes from. <laughs> so these, these, these two, and sometimes it's only one side because again, you know, there's imbalance front to back, but then there's imbalance side to side as well. Usually we have one side that is more dominant, other side shoulders usually will usually tend to, tend to elevate, right? So we'll have this imbalance side to side and then one side sternocleidal mustard is going to be a little bit tighter than the other side. This is a little bit too technical but it's, uh, I like to talk about these things. So, okay well thank you guys. Uh, so Ellie and Casper they already left. Uh, it was a really good session. Uh, hopefully this is understandable. I'll post this on YouTube and uh, you know you can take a look at it one more time if you want to review. I have all these videos like there's there's video about uh, Thoracic outlet syndrome, the tight scaly muscles. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, uh, I uh, I talk about all this compression that is possible in so scaly muscles. They can compress uh, this um, cervical uh, nerves. Um, um, the uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, right? So brachial plexus is going to be compressed. Clavicle can compress it. Pectoral minor can compress it. Extracervical rib can compress it. Like it's it's very clear in, the, in that video. It kind of explains it all. So if you if you watch, watch that one, that you know just just you know expands a little bit. You know. Okay. Thank you. Let's end here. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you.